let's hear it for Jason's jump. <laughs> you, you know what's funny about that? You can tell, like, who Benedict and I look to for guidance, because you watch Battle Like and you jump, I watch Ackles test it perfectly still. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean, man? I don't know! That's why I'm always... Hey, you know what? I can't wait till you direct again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not happening, actually. So, not, uh, not this season. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> He's moved on. He's too busy doing, you know, other shows now. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. No, that's not yeah. That's really? really? He's, he's still in the Bible, though. Yeah. Perfect. Please, <laughs> <Christmas. laughs> uh, It's not really true. Yeah, yeah. Hey, do you so, want to do the honors? Yeah, I think I will. Minneapolis? St. Paul and the surrounding counties, please, warm welcome for Mr. Jason Eggles and Daniel. Hello, Rose. Hey, uh, Dick. Dick. Yo. Where's the smarter space? Oh, the smarter space? Where is he, he was in the wings and now he stepped backstage. He's watching from afar. Love you. Perfect. Love you back. A four rhymes with a jar, but uh, uh, oh. see you later. Good talk. Thanks, man. Uh, hi, guys. Who's a uh, who's first timer? I feel so far away. Nobody? Really? Uh, it's awesome to be here. It's cold. Uh, okay. But nice. Love you guys. It's not cold yet. This is a heat wave for did Minnesota. Your, did your people not show up today? Good job. Well, I just noticed that the large section in the middle is usually <laughs> reserved for the fans of yours that you like to pay to come and show up and <laughs> cheer you on. There's people right to us. I don't see them. Ah, okay. They spread out. I see. They dispersed. Got it. Uh, love you, man. Who? <laughs> Thank you talking about spade. They're yelling at spade. <laughs> Misha. <laughs> See you later, guys. I love you, Terry. I love you back. I love you back. Suck it, girls. <laughs> hey, she's getting good money to say that. I'm not worried about it. Good to be here, Steve. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> um, all right. Okay. Everybody loves each other. Let's move on. <laughs> so let's just all get in the pile and feel the love. Whatever. <laughs> oh, what is it? Yeah, let's do that. I hope it's somebody will you know, chip their tooth and ruin it for the rest of us. Um, all right, let's go ahead and you guys have been waiting patiently, so before we jabber. Hi. 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 Uh, my name is Katie from Omaha, Nebraska. Hey, take it easy. Take it easy. And this is my first so I'm Welcome, Katie from Omaha. Um, so I wanted to ask, what is some of the best advice you've ever received? Leave the gun, take the canola. I actually have something, uh, but Apple's will go first. <laughs> uh, I have been fortunate enough to receive some very good pieces of advice from uh, people who are very important to me. Uh, I'll give you a couple of those. Uh, one, uh, my father at an early age when I left for uh, Hollywood said uh, in regards to auditioning for jobs, um, to view that as your last performance. Go in there, knock it out, and when you walk out that door, move on. Uh, I made the mistake once of not doing that and waiting by the phone, staring at it, knowing it would ring, because, you know, of course, of course I got the job. I didn't get the job. And you, you also have to remember that, you know, for a couple of guys that are up here who uh, were very fortunate enough to get on a show that has lasted this long, um, Many people consider that to be a success. We were rejected far more times than we were accepted. 
And yeah, I told you that funny story about when I, so when I, just to speak about this business, I, I, when I moved into a house, and this is like, right before Supernatural, maybe uh, 20 or three or something, and I was showing a friend of a friend my house, I was like, oh, it's so cool. And I had probably 20 or 30 scripts stacked next to my bed. And she was like, oh my God, are those all the auditions you've been on? And I was like, <laughs> follow me. <laughs> and I walked her downstairs to my garage where I had file boxes of probably a thousand, not using hyperbole, like a thousand, two thousand scripts. And I was like, those are the auditions I've been on. You know, so, uh, yeah. So that, that helped me, uh, that advice kind of helped me deal with that rejection mentally of just, I didn't get rejected, I walked in, I gave my performance, even though it was in a room and in front of five people, but I did that and I'm leaving and I'm moving on to what's next. If I get a phone call and they're like, they really liked you, they want you to come back, or they want to give you the job, then that's an encore. Uh, and that helped me, and another piece of advice, uh, my grandmother said, and I mentioned this in my being great, um, she said, your talent's gonna get you the job but it's your character that will keep it. Um, I, I agree with everything you said. Uh, I have, uh, so my favorite quote, which is a weird quote, because it kind of seems depressing, uh, but it's, okay. So, um, one of the best pieces of advice I ever got was pain is mandatory, suffering, is optional. So we're all going to go through some bad times in our lives. It's going to suck. Um, and you can either approach it as like, okay, this is a low, but it's going to be cyclical. I'm going to get back up. I want to fight through it. Or you push against it and you're mad about it and that causes suffering. So you're going to go through pain, but you don't have to suffer. Um, and that's kind of helped me in my downfalls. <clears throat> Thanks a bunch. Welcome to this time. You know, you said pain is mandatory. Pain is mandatory, suffering is optional. Pain is not mandatory. I got some pills. <laughs> Just find me next time you get a problem. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Unless your knee hurts and then I got you covered. <laughs> your knees hurt too bad for me to try and steal something. Uh, hi, how are you? Is there not like a blood rivalry between you? Yes. Yeah. Well, she get her. She's right there. <laughs> fighting them, um, those were some gigantic guys, too. I mean, this guy, he picked me up like a rag doll, and I, I just, it, that's scary. Like, I'm not a small human, and he made me feel like I was... Like, was like it was, it, it was crazy. And he did it in the loincloth, which was just like insult to injury. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was, that was an interesting, uh, Sequence. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Hi. And where? No, where? Where from? And under as well. Or just. <laughs>
and, and under and over. And <laughs> under. I get it. <laughs> uh, okay. Thank you. So Sam and Jared's theme songs would be different. Um, uh, we unfortunately don't really get a, a vote um, in the music, and that's largely, and this is a very, I keep using this word today, unromantic, sort of boring, logistical part of filming a TV show, is sometimes you're like, oh man, Led Zeppelin would be great here. And I guess, uh, yeah. <laughs> And then our producers call their agent, and they're like, hey, we'd love to use Black Dog for 15 seconds. Like, cool, it'll be $7 million. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, that, that would, $7 million would cover me for a whole episode. So, <laughs> just, just, just. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying really hard. I had a good one last time in Vancouver, and you didn't give me a rim shot. No, you didn't. I did, no. I did. I did the thing about the. It was good. It wasn't. Trying. It was good. Uh, we don't have a, we don't have a vote. Uh, it has to go through a, a bunch of levels that are far above our pay grade. Um, so if Jared had a theme song, what yeah. would it be? I think we're alone now by Tiffany. <laughs> or only in my dreams by Debbie Gibson. Is it Debbie Gibson? Yeah, one of those. I mean, flip a coin. You? I mean, that's hard to pick. That's really, it's hard to choose between those two what anthems. What's <laughs> <laughs> uh, Well, I think we all know what Dean's is. Thank you. Um, Relax, don't do it. Stranger danger. High five. This one. Boom! Too good. Uh, I thought yours was. I thought yours was uh, uh, the final countdown. It is. Stop it. That was. That was like a like 2016. It's changed. It's a D and G. We should move on. Um, What's your theme song? Out of curiosity. Uh, yeah. Under the bridge for and under. <laughs> or over the hills and far away. Led Zeppelin for and over. <laughs> Say again. Oh, uh, the and over thing. Somewhere over the rainbow. <laughs> you can use the name of your city and it's not the truth. It's a good song. Didn't hype me up something, but good song. Nice to meet you. <laughs> She's like, oh my god. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. Hi. 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 Okay, so I've got one. And that was your question, but what is your question? I got it. I got it. Uh, we've never really pranked Alex per se, but he's similar to what we don't. Uh, I wouldn't say prank as much as like try and break him. Torture. Yeah, torture. Um, we waterboarded him a couple episodes ago. And, uh, 
He's missing a few fingernails on his left hook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All in good fun. Uh, we just, we, uh... We enjoy it. <laughs> I think during the, the, uh, the Western episode, not the, it wasn't Western, but when, when, uh, when we were at the kind of cowboy hotel, and, because he wasn't even really in the scene, he was in the background of the scene, and so we were actually messing with Misha, but Alex, Alcal, we all, we call him either Alcal, or, uh, or AC, Alex, um, <laughs> We're trying to figure it out. We're trying to suss it out. Uh, but I think probably the scenes where he's in the background, because he has to act like a Nephilim, right? Who's one year old. And we keep messing around, and he keeps breaking, even though Misha's learned now to uh, ignore us. Um, so Misha ends up holding it together, while Alcal ends up going like... <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's pretty the problem is, is there's, there's so many things happening at such a rapid rate of <laughs> screwing with this poor guy. <laughs> That to to pick, you know, it'd be, oh, there was this one elaborate prank. We don't do elaborate pranks. It's just this constant stream of, of torture. <laughs> and um, I, you really have to kind of be there to witness what it is, because it could be as subtle as, um, you know, a, a, a wink, and as brutal as Jared just kicking him in the nuts. Um, <laughs> I say brutal. So it's friendly. Right. Yeah. Just looking for a place to rest your foot. A little, a little bit. Um, so it's, uh, it, as, as I think Misha has, has put it several times, um, there's, there's nothing in uh, drama school or uh, <laughs> any, any kind of teachings that pertain to performance uh, or acting that can prepare you for working with people like he and I. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. <laughs>
so presumably he's alive. He or she? He? She? Great. Great. Is he physically visible to anyone? <laughs> Well, that's yes, a good, he is that's a physically visible to somebody. <laughs> somebody might even be looking at him right now. Wow. see something dangling, why do you turn around? Oh, thank you, Gail, so much. I'm sorry, Gail, thank you. Yeah, Molly. Oh, Matt, yeah, you too. Hi, my name's Maddie. All right, Linda! <laughs> Not even close. Um, hey, Karen. <laughs> you which? Hi. Seven questions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I hate <laughs> it for what? I didn't hear. I, I don't hear good, Lee. <laughs> uh, I'll start. I so Jared is kind of funny with. Okay. So, my human corporeal self, you're on the uh, I'm funny with words. I feel like a lot of times when you argue with somebody, it's a way to kind of get to the bottom of what you're actually feeling, um, which is probably frustrating to a lot of my friends. Um, so, I don't, I don't regret anything Sam has said because I feel like the lower you go, and this is probably a, a personality fault, of my own, that I, I carry on my hair. Don't make a face. <laughs> um, but I feel like it's the best way to hash things out. Even like when my kids, they're, you know, five or six, four, and one. But when they say things, you're like, okay, I know they didn't mean that, but why are they saying that? Like, what's, what's the bottom of it? So I, I, don't, I don't regret anything Sam's ever said. I was bummed about Amelia. Um, she's amazing. Leanne Balaban's a sweetheart. And, um, Great actress. I was I was bummed that Sam didn't go after his brother or try and figure things out. Um, but I don't regret things that Sam said or did. And I, I think there's a funny thing, and it's it's come up a lot recently in my life for some reason. Um, but true friends don't always tell you what you want to hear. You know, sometimes they say the mean things that because they know you, and they know what you're going through, and they know something's off, or they know you're not being the person you can be, and they'll stick it to you, you know? Like, I think probably in real life, we've, Jensen and Jared have said some serious things to each other, uh, but it's for a good reason, you know what I mean? Like, I think, you know, your friend isn't the person that tells you you're perfect all the time. Your friend is the one who goes like, hey dude, like you're better than this, you know, when you're, when you're being, Different. You're not being. You're not living up to who you can be. Uh, you know, your friends tell you the hard things uh, out of love. So I think Sam and Dean kind of realize that they're, they're all going to just insult you now. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Masochist. Uh, yeah. So that's my. Opinion. I, I was born in season eight, I suppose. But beyond that, um, 
I don't know. I feel like there's been, there's certainly been some things that, uh, you know, Dean has gone <clears throat> behind Sam's back and done a lot of things. Um, he's always, he's always done them with what, what he is, what he is hoping is, is, is good intentions. Uh, Mark McCain, um, things like that, where he may be setting himself up for sacrifice. Um, and doesn't tell him about it. Um, I will say that there's, there's that's happened uh, a lot in this series, uh, and it will be something that uh, will continue to happen. Um, yeah. And I think that's if if I could point out one thing, it's just the you know Dean not being up front with his intentions, whether good or bad, with his brother all the time, and. Probably thinking that it's it's helping the situation by not letting him know, so that he can maybe talk him out of the decision that he's already made. Um, those are those are tough pills to swallow, I would think, from a from a real perspective. Um, so yeah, I mean, take your pick. There's many of them. I hope uh, the long way to ask your question was worth it. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Hey, brother. Nice. Where's Amy? Bro, uh, where's Amy? Hi, Amy. Hi, you got a lot of hands pointing at you. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Guys. Well, congratulations. Quickly, yeah, congrats, guys. Uh, good question. Tough question. Good question. Tough question. I'll, I'll, I'll go first. Let you think about it. It's there. There are uh, there are a, a few to choose from. Um, so I will. Uh, I don't know about favorite because it really is kind of hard to pick a favorite. I'll tell you one of my one of my favorites uh, is uh, Baby. For for a variety of reasons, uh, one of them being that it, we'd never done anything like that before, and for a show to, to, to go that long and never, and, and then all of a sudden try something completely new as, as just from a uh, from a filming standpoint, uh, to rig all of the cameras onto a car and then tell the entire story from a car's perspective uh, was both technically challenging. Physically challenging, uh, and it, it, but it, but it was one of those things where the crew, the cast and the crew, uh, accepted that challenge, and, and we, we dove right in. Uh, there was a learning curve, uh, but by the end of that episode, we were all pretty proud of it. We hung our hats on it, uh, and that that was that experience of shooting that show and the way that we shot it was uh, one that I'm really proud of. Was Baby also the episode with the scene? And Burnaby, where we were like next to the Romy's Burger, that uh, we were both sitting in the car. Yeah, that was a great. I'll echo what Jensen said. Um, I guess I don't want to cop out, but I have a lot of favorite episodes as far as kind of TV goes um, in general. But there are two episodes other than Baby. Baby is probably the third that stick out to me as a, as, a, as an episode of TV that'll never be replicated has, in my in my limited scope and knowledge of television and television's history. Um, Baby's one. I don't feel like there's any other show. I don't think even like Dukes of Hazzard with the famous car or Knight Rider. Like the, the, the TV shows that had famous cars, you know, um, never did something like Baby. <clears throat> but there are two other ones. And I want to kind of preface it by saying there are episodes I love of Supernatural, like Sacrifice, uh, the season eight finale, the season five finale, Swan Song, yeah. Yeah. Um, but there are two, Yellow Fever makes me crack up every time. <laughs> there are two episodes of Supernatural that I, I really, I'm saying this as, as objectively as I can. I don't think it will ever be done on any other show. Uh, <laughs> one, was the, one was the French Mistake. I mean, 
who else can get away with that? And another, um, and it, it, it's purely because it was such a shout out and a thank, thanks to you guys. Uh, I don't remember the name of the, name of the episode, but it was the 200th episode. Um, fan fiction. Fan fiction. Uh, so I feel like those two episodes are so unique to Supernatural. I don't feel like there's any other show on the planet that could ever do that, you know? And that's maybe <laughs> arrogant or, uh, you know, my, my hubris is showing. Um, but, uh... I'll get it. <laughs> okay, that's better. This show sucks. Uh, yeah, so I think, I think those two. What about you? What's your... Uh, yellow favorite? Yellow favorite? <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah, watch the gag reel, man. Like, we're laughing our asses off the entire time. But, uh, yeah, that was, that was fun. Good episode. Thanks. You just made me think of something. Yeah. Um, Happy you, anniversary, when, guys. When you were, uh, so I don't know that we've ever uh, said this, but so on the show, uh, there's a lot of eating going on, um, uh, primarily by Dean. And a lot of times it's hamburgers. You see us eating hamburgers quite often on the show, whether it's, uh, you know, a roadside place. Yeah, hamburgers! So unfortunately, we don't have any Juicy Lucy's in, uh... Oh, those are amazing! Yes, uh, but we get all of our hamburgers from a place called Rovers in Vancouver. So, I don't know why we've never said that. So if you're ever in Vancouver and you want to have, uh, you know, burgers at the Winchester Z, you gotta go to Romer's. And, as a matter of fact, the place we get it from, uh, the Romer's we get it from, is about 20 feet from where we filmed that scene in Baby, where, the, where we're sleeping the in the car. The big, long, five-page, yeah. where we're laying, I'm laying about in the front seat, he's laying in the back seat, and we had that big, long chat. That was right outside the Romer's Burger. Right outside the, the, the Romer's uh, where we always get our burgers. So there he goes, a few of you that are like, write that down. <laughs> and for the rest of you, you're like, what am I going to be in Vancouver? <laughs> Thanks a lot, Jared. Congrats, guys. Um, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, my name is Samuel. Hi, man. would slip my neck. <laughs> the best purchase was the engagement ring. No, okay. The best purchase recently you was... That? No, I made mine. <laughs> Dude, I went to Jared. And you're sitting there, and we're going to post a video soon of us all sort of commiserating uh, Misery Loves Company. Um, <laughs> the worst purchase I ever made. I, I, I'm sure I could think uh, about that and list a, a, a ton. Uh, I will give you uh, something that comes to mind immediately. Uh, both best purchase and the worst purchase at the same time. <laughs> Years back, when they, they first came out with like the really like dope high-end drones. Oh. I, being the great friend that I am, bought two. Oh. One for me, and one for him. Oh. We got them all charged up, took them out to the parking lot during filming while they were setting up the scene. Not my fault. And I'll reenact Jared. 
was in a weird position, dude. So the remote, I was doing a great job. I'll agree. Uh, okay. I'll wear that. I'll Just destroy. I mean, whoa, 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 whoa. like, there's, 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 <laughs> there's an asterisk. So here's the deal. The remote, we weren't really schooled in remoting, or I was not. And there's a. I didn't crash mine. Yeah, but you. Okay. So there's a there's a button on the remote that's like the oh my god the drone's gonna kill somebody button and it just kills the fans and so it drops out of the sky like a bird or which you generally want to hit when it's 100 to 200 feet in the air. I didn't know. It was just go ahead and kill that motor. I don't know where's it going? Kill. So, uh oh. I didn't know there was a kill button. I think it's like hey your your drone's about to hit a power line or something and you hit it and it literally falls out of the sky. Um, like a ranger, and I, I, I have, I have clunky hands. First flight. First flight. First, first thirty seconds. Nah. He went into a building, and then he was like, "Kill." <laughs> it, was, it was a good lesson. Total, and then just it was a good lesson. Down and walked away. Yes, good lesson. I don't buy you crap anymore. <laughs> That's why we don't have nice things. Yeah. <laughs> it's why you don't have nice things. It's David Yeager. David Freaking Yeager. Yes. Lord, please, Lord, sir. Lord. True. True. Sometimes we, we do all do bad things. Well done. All right, you're freaking me out. Now we do. Dude, you, uh, uh, my worst, well, I guess my worst purchase was the time he bought me a drone. Uh, no, I don't know my worst purchase. Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. What was your worst purchase? Bring it. Bring it. Work in the system, I can appreciate that. Me too. And then I dropped them out of the sky. <laughs> I will say that I thought he I thought he was ready for the upgrade because we had had these helicopters that we bought at like at like the drugstore uh, that were also these like remote control helicopters. And we, we flew those lasted a lot longer than the drone. Um, <laughs> and we, we, we had it. So Halloween in Canada is fireworks galore. I don't know. So you, two people know that. Um, so every Halloween in Canada, it's it's like the Fourth of July. Like there's fireworks going off in neighborhoods, or in parks, uh, over the water, every, everywhere. And so you can get them. It's like the one day a year you can actually fire them off in the city limits. We bought a whole bunch of them. And what we did was, is we strapped them to the skids of the helicopter. <laughs> and, wait for it. And we, uh, we took them to the parking lot. We took them to the, yeah, this is amazing. This is, kids, right? This it was, what is it, uh, it was like a bottle rocket. That was, and we had, yeah, we had, uh, uh, Roman candles. Uh, and so, you know, the, you guys know the Roman candles. Yeah. <laughs> so we strapped those to the skids, two each. We lit them. We never took told anybody this. I'm telling him right now. <laughs> and and we literally, like, he was on one side of the parking lot, I was on the other, and we literally just... We're in a helicopter fight. We're in a helicopter fight. <laughs> and, uh, Seth is boring. <laughs> no, it's not. We make it fun. Um, and so I, I thought we were ready to graduate. Some of us were. <laughs> and we were in, like, a, we were in, like, a, we were in a, uh, outside of the studio, we were in, like, a, like a uh, industrial park, you know, where they drop off pallets of whatever. Um, and so we're like, oh yeah, like, let's get these helicopters up, put Roman candles on it, and film it. And the helicopters, it turns out, when you're trying to shoot each other, 
the, when the Roman candle goes off, it kind of, the helicopter bends a little bit. And so, like, the guy who was filming it, Sean did, Shawnee, it well, yeah, would so recoil from it. It recoiled, it would turn a little bit. So it's sort of firing at us. At us. <laughs> so we're like, ah, oh, this is awesome. Oh, God, it's attacking me. Ah, 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 ah. We have, like, iPhone cameras of Roman candles. <laughs> Kids, don't. Dude, this is like, we're not role models. I know what the band's gonna do next weekend. <laughs> that was fun. That was amazing. I would yeah. say that's our best purchase. Yeah, the drone, not so much. <laughs> Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Right. That's, that's a, yeah, Apple Valley. Those are letters. No, I don't know. What do they stand for? Let's hear for Carol Jones. <laughs> he hit it. In all fairness, I was holding it. He hit it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wasn't even here. It's okay, we all know. I would choose a Boulevardier, which some of you may or may not know that. God bless you. But a Boulevardier, uh, the, the, the actual word means uh, a man about town, a well-traveled man about town. Oh. <laughs> His would be a Bellini. Yes. Which stands for when Eenie rings a bell. <laughs> Boom. Uh, I would do... Thank you. I thought that was an awful joke. <laughs> I would do. Uh, Are you laughing at when Amy rings a bell? <laughs> Boom. I would do. Uh, hot crap. Hot crap. <laughs> I guess a Manhattan, which uh, in German means gentleman who wears a hat. <laughs> Boom.
What? <laughs> hey, strawberry daiquiri, let's move on. Uh, thanks, Ms. Ginger. Thanks, WG. WG, CJ. Hi. Hey, guys. Hi. We're going to ask a question. Yeah, I met Sam. Hi. Her name is Sam Winchester, which is pretty cool. Where is she? Hi. I see the hands. Okay, so my question is, if you want to have arms as long as your fingers or fingers as long as your arms, what would you choose? I know what he would choose. <laughs> Arms as long as your fingers, or fingers as long as your arms. I would take I would take fingers as long as my arms. What? I bet you would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I still want to be able to hug my children. Jerry. <laughs> Are you saying T Rexes can't hug? <laughs> I would do. Is that the right answer? Is there a right answer? I would do, you know what, I would do, uh, whatever the opposite of Jensen. <laughs> Just a wrong answer. So I could be unique and awesome. That way I wouldn't have to hug Jensen. <laughs> or his children. <laughs> or any of you. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm thinking about everybody. <laughs> That's a good question. What would no, you that's do? that's going to be on the internet. <laughs> what would you do? Um, fingers Yeah. Wrong answer. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> Love you, man. Thanks a bunch. <laughs> Thanks. That makes me think of uh, somebody... Spoon fingers? What's called it? What? <laughs> Creepy YouTube thing? Spoon hands? No, oh, salad fingers. No. Salad fingers? Although, if you don't know what that is, look it up. It's cool stuff. <laughs> Uh, I, that's what nightmares are made of. Salad fingers? Yeah. What are you talking about? He's, he's great. He's like, yeah, he's cool, man. He's just hungry. Uh, <laughs> there, there, somebody made this, uh, uh, I don't know what you would call it, like a... a not a... No. It, they, they said that uh, hell, the, the, the depiction, uh, depicting hell uh, is a, a table full of uh, amazing feast, just all the food you can eat, and everybody's sitting around this amazing feast, uh, but they can't eat because their arms are straightened, and they, they can't bend their arms, so they can't eat, because they can't, obviously, can't Why couldn't they go themselves. like this? <laughs> I'm getting to the point. Uh, because, because they're trying to feed themselves, and then heaven is the same thing. Food, feast, and everybody's feeding each other. I don't want your dirty But you, you want your little finger hands. So good luck eating with those things, Tess. T Rex is still eight. Would you look? Alright, right. true story. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Sarah, that's, is that German? Sarah, sorry, I kind of lost my voice. Austrian? Hi, Sarah. <laughs> Way to go. I, uh, I kind of lost my voice, sir. Uh, that's not a good joke. Sorry, guys. I'm trying. I'm trying. Sorry, Norton. I got one. I got one. I was wondering, either Jensen Yeah, I, I, <laughs> there's, what do you, oh no, <laughs> there's great, uh, I'd like the audience to see, there's some solid junk in the trunk. Uh, you guys, you guys got it.
get up on it. <laughs> Jensen? Yeah, I bet you would. <laughs> It would be funny to have like just garbage. Well, well, we What's all this junk in the trunk? We, <laughs> we did get to check off one of the weapons. <laughs> that was cool. There is one other one that has been in there. Not necessarily a weapon, but that has been in there since day one that has never been used. That I always am like, why haven't we used the grappling hook? <laughs> No, I'm like, just let me, just somewhere, anywhere, even if I just, <laughs> all right, we're fine. Did we not use it for different letters? Did we not use it for different letters? No, never used it. I mean, all, like, that, that, that was, was the, and maybe Jensen's dream <laughs> is just, just, all right, I'm going. Grab my hood, start rappelling down the side of the building somewhere, and then just pull out the grenade launcher. <laughs> There you go, boom, season finale. I think on a spot, I think it was in one of the versions of the script. I think it was written in one of the, uh, when, I guess it was Sam and Mary uh, kind of infiltrate the middle letter, the bridge middle letters. I think the grappling hook was in one of the scenes. It must have gotten cut because of time issues. I haven't used it. Yeah, we should use it. <laughs> yeah, that jump would be awesome. Thanks, Sarah. Nice to meet you. Hi there. Sam what? It's usually what? short for Samantha. <laughs> Samuel. Sam. Out. I don't not believe in ghosts, and that sounds like a cop out. Um, and I, I actually have had a paranormal experience um, at the Driscoll Hotel. Oh God, not this one again! <laughs> yeah. It was pretty. It was bizarre. It was a bizarre. It was honestly like I'm, I'm a pretty practical dude. Um, this was a really crazy sort of paranormal experience at the oldest hotel in Austin. Um, yeah, 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 Boston. Awesome. Um, it was before they redid that wing, I believe. Um, but, so, I guess those are my two answers. I don't not believe, and yes. Actors? Um, I, I haven't had, uh, any run-ins. Uh, and I don't assume I will. Um, because if they are real, and I'm not saying they aren't, I know I'm not an actual hunter in real life, <laughs> but I've played one on TV long, long TV long enough to where if I was a ghost, I'd maybe pick somebody else. <laughs> I have had moments in my life where I have felt something, an energy, a, a presence, whatever you want to call it, um, and instead of, instead of getting fearful or getting anxiety about it or, or starting to freak out, I just go, all right, your move. You want to dance? Uh, and then that tends to just kind of squash it. So I suggest trying that method if you guys ever get into a situation where something's going on and it can't be explained, um, call them out. Say, hey, show yourself. <laughs> you can't, you're stupid. <laughs> I watch Supernatural, I know what to do. <laughs> Thank you, Samantha. Thank you. Hi. Hey. Hey. Sorry, I think I actually made it up here. Surprise. <laughs> We're sorry. It's a good one. Oh. 
boat. Canoe? <laughs> Confucius, sir. Man who walked through turnstile, uh, turn, what do you call it? <laughs> turn, I'm not gonna help you with this joke. <laughs> Man who walked through airport turnstiles, sideways, going to Bangkok. <laughs> stand on toilet, not crazy, just high on pot. <laughs> oh, come on, man! That's <laughs> good. Uh, man, you sit on tech, always get the point. <laughs> Seriously? Those are all good, those are all good. Uh, how do you remember this? How does a dinosaur pay their bills with Tyrannosaurus checks? Uh, I've only got one, and I like it, so I keep telling it, and I'm gonna tell it now. Knock, knock. Who's there? Interrupting sloth. Interrupting sloth. JJ, knock knock. Who's there? Interrupting sloth. Interrupting sloth who? Interrupting sloth who? Interrupt that, I don't get it. <laughs> Here we go. Knock knock. Who's there? Uh, banana. Knock knock. Who's there? Banana. Knock knock. Oh, who's there? Orange. Orange who? Orange, you go out of it and say banana. Oh, Alright, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> choose from, I'll pick one, and this might be an odd one, but it was, uh, it was our first fight. I remember that. Uh, it was, uh, no, it was in the, the record store. On set, the record store, uh, scene, and we got into, in fact, I don't even remember what it was about, but he and I got into, it was a season one, you a few episodes in, and for some reason, 
we, we went at each other uh, verbally, and it almost got physical. And he, he took off walking down the, down the street, uh, I went the other way, and that was, I think, the last time we ever got into a fight. Because after that, we zapped each other's trailer and basically said, look, this can't ever happen. If we want this to succeed, we want this to succeed, that kind of petty crap can't happen. So that was one of my favorite things. I think there are a bunch, I remember that now that you mentioned it. Um, there are a bunch, what, what occurred to me when you asked it was actually um, almost two years ago and uh, our friend Dick Spate was up in Vancouver directing and he was waiting on a phone call for his twins to be born. And uh, Birdie, Jay Bird was born during the summer so I, we weren't together. But I remember the entire day, it was the day that we shot that sort of spade when we did like the Pulp Fiction Reservoir Dogs type thing. We're all like, come on now, I'm talking. <laughs> God bless you. Chuck bless you. You might need a Bob roll bless paper her. towels after that one. <laughs> I remember the entire day, and Ackles the entire time, like the code word was twins, right? Uh, and so we're like, okay, we're just waiting like for the phone call about the twins, for them to be born, this and that. And at one point in time, we have known each other for 12 years, 13 years, or whatever, at that point in time. And I was like, hey dude, you, you got your passport? You all sex, you're gonna the airport from set as soon as uh, Danielle was in labor. And he's like, yeah, man, of course I have my passport. And I was like, okay, uh, and this is totally random. I was like, go to your trailer, touch your passport. We're like an hour from where we, our apartments in Vancouver and... Keep in mind, we travel together every weekend. All the time. Every week. He has never asked me never, if I have my never passport. Sense. I'm like, have yes, I'm a grown human being, Jerry. Yeah, yeah. I have my passport. And I'm like, and he's like, are you sure? You need to put your hands on it. I'm like, like, go, go touch it. I, I have it. It's in the same place it always is. My backpack, I know my backpack's here, I have it. It's fine. And he's like, did you touch it? I'm like... And he just says it walks away, and now I'm starting to freak right out. Because <laughs> I'm like, okay, A, that's weird. B, he's playing a joke on me. He's, he's got it. He's gonna have it. But I'll just, I'll just go check. So I go, and I'm like, this is that little pocket, and I'm like, it's not here. <laughs> and I'm like, he's gotta have it. And then before I like, took two steps, I remembered that it was in my jacket pocket at home. In Austin, in in Vancouver. Austin. Austin. I'm in Vancouver. How did you get in Vancouver? So I have a, there's a Nexus card pass uh, that allows me to get into Canada, but they don't accept you coming into the States with that. You have to have your passport. Uh, we have a dear friend who's an APD, who's an Austin police department, so you call him So, uh, yeah, so whatever, we... we he goes back to he goes, I don't know how you knew, man. I was like ghost white like, too. I'm like, great. Ghost white. I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna miss everything. I'm gonna miss, yeah. Anyway, what, what was the point of the story? The point of the story was like a uh, friendship thing. It was like a weird knowing somebody and going like, and so the day I. Yeah, it was almost know. like some like clairvoyancy that, that you yeah. were like, hey, uh, uh, do you have it? And I'm like, yeah, of course. It. And I didn't have it. Yeah. And I didn't you get never asked me that any other time. Never ever traveled. Four cents. I didn't get to see him become a father. I was in Austin. He was in LA. But I got to see him become a father of three. And I was there. We were on set together. Mr. Spade was there. Um, thank God we found out about the passport things. We would call customs ahead of time. We were like, hey, uh, there's going to be a guy who's coming in. He's an American. Luckily, we had a, like a, a so friend in the, in the police department. Calls, people, calls, he made some phone calls, helped out on that end. And then not only that, now he understood the, the severity of the situation. Uh, he was off duty and was waiting for he and I when we landed. We got his in his cruiser, we got thrown in the back of his cruiser, and we <laughs> ran nine red lights to the hospital. And by the way, I'm gonna say, if you wanna track this moment on film, you can, because if you go back and watch like in the middle of you, there is a giant hole in the story. Because Jensen had to go. Like it was like, dude, I will act up until it's time for you to go, and then I will be a ghost. You will not have me. So we were trying to figure out like Jared shot his stuff out, we're like, 
well, you know, Gabe and I were all talking like, well, how do we get Dean out of this situation? So at one point, there are demons headed up the stairs to fight you and a guest actor. And you go, and you go, oh no, there's demons going up here. <laughs> and Dean is like, I'll go check the side yard. And off he goes. <laughs> and that's it. You don't, you don't go with him. You don't know what Dean's doing. Because Dean is off having babies somewhere else. in the middle of you. That's where it was. That was what yeah. happened. Yeah. happened. So that, that, yeah, that day, kind of uh, pretty awesome. But there, there have been many, and most of them uh, are on film. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Missy. one of the many seasons of Supernatural. So, thank you for your question. And thank you for <laughs> Yeah.